called the sign. So what's going to happen is you throw it and then you receive it. And so each person is going to have a sign. Mine is always tapping the knee. Josie's has been a peace sign. Go around doing signs. Mine is this. We'll go to your sign. Mine is this. Fair hands. Everyone do the sign as it happens. Brooke. Okay. You're good, Joel. Don't. <laughs> you do. What? That's it. I, I can't. <laughs> Good. It, and just for people who maybe don't know, if you send it and someone doesn't receive it, you, you have to keep it. sending it until they get it. And you, I guess. You have it. You have it. You have it. You have it. Because I have it. <laughs> Megan. Megan. Sorry, Megan. Sorry, Megan. Yeah. Megan, me. What if you're just sending it back? Do you have it? That's technically against the rules. Nicholas has it! Go <laughs> on! No. I think I'll ask if I have it. Oh, do you have it? <laughs> Josie, do you have it? Jason, <laughs> do you have it? Yes, do you have it? We wanted to have some students slash work crew, aka seniors come up and just say <clears throat> their experience with camp and how they grew in funny stories, not as like a FOMO thing, like missing out, but just as encouragement for this community here on a Wednesday night and also at camp or just for future camps um, of just how we can just love and grow together as a community back down the mountain from New Mexico. Oh. Um, we have a few people who will, will speak. Um, Megan and I's experience was pretty good, I think. Some of my, some of my highlights of camp, um, the van rides were always fun because I was driving the work crew van. Some other highlights were uh, we played a few night games where we got to go out in the woods. Um, we uh, we played Murder in the Dark, which was a fun game. Uh, we went white water, white water rafting, um, which I didn't really like because I'm very afraid of rivers and water. My highlight was throwing ice at everybody. And I started an ice fight and that was my favorite part because it brought everybody together. And everybody thought I was crazy, but I just thought that was fun because I felt like most people were smiling. And then that turned into a lot of other games and murder in the dark all night. So I think it got everybody like hyper. And I like just seeing everybody like hyper and being themselves and creating friendships within that group of people. Okay, who wants to go next? I really liked the car rides too. They were a lot of fun. And they weren't really like boring or like, like, oh, I gotta get in the car for again. It was like something I looked forward to. Um, I really liked cooking, because I was on work crew, and I really liked all the songs we played and all the goofy things we did while we were cooking. Um, and yeah, I also really liked uh, rafting, because I love rafting. Um, it was kind of scary though, because our leader, our like guide, wanted to go surfing. So he went up on this like, whatever, like a wave, and then water got in our boat and I thought we were gonna submerge like tip. It was really scary and our water bottles almost fell out. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, and yeah, I got really close to my friends and to other people on the trip and I, I really enjoyed it and I would say it's worth the money and the time away, so. <laughs> My favorite part was rafting because it was raining, which is like really fun and a cool experience. And me and Bailey also went swimming in the rain, and that was just like fun. And it was kind of cold, but it like wasn't that bad. It was like worth it. And something funny that happened was Brayden, Bailey's brother, fell out of the boat. And it was like really funny, and Megan freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really funny. And um, I just love getting close to everybody there. We're all like really good friends now. And it's just a great experience to like get close with people from church and like kind of form a community. 
which I love. And I also really like the Ice Fight movie, Loki. I thought it did bring people together. And yeah, it was really fun. And also, I would say it's worth all the time and money. And it's like just a good experience overall. I think definitely the car rides, because that's when we like, we, there was nothing to do besides talk. So we were all just talking and listening to music and it was just like, it was definitely the, I'd say it's the best part because we were connecting. It was just like, we grew our friendships on the car ride. I don't know about the other ran. I don't know, it didn't seem like a fun time. <laughs> but, I don't know, you guys just weren't with it, bro. You guys gotta just talk. It was, it was awesome. It was just, it was really fun talking and just getting to know each other. Because I only know, knew two of the people in the car, and I got to meet Nick. It was really nice, super fun. Uh, funny story. Um, we memed Michael Jackson the entire trip and annoyed the entire, the entire camp with just like Michael Jackson noises. That was the best part. Santa Fe. We what did we do? we went to a toy store in Santa Fe. That was super fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went to a toy store and then we went to a jewelry store and we just saw like rocks that were worth like we saw a rock that was like thirty eight hundred thirty eight thousand. It was like crazy expensive for some reason. It's definitely worth going. It's a very good experience bonding with new people and people you already know. It's definitely worth going. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks guys for sharing. Um, we just wanted to give a little taste of just those of us that have been there and kind of recapping what happened. And I feel like sometimes it can be like, you're at camp and then you go home. It's kind of like called a camp high. And I always remember being sad coming home because you're like with your friends, you made all these new friendships and then you just go home and then you're like with your family that could either be fun or annoying. And so we just wanted to debrief with people that went to camp, but then also people that didn't and just know that community can keep getting built here. Um, and we're just excited for that, for the summer and what happens in the fall. My hope always for this place and with our leaders that are here is just to make it a place where you can meet new people, have fun, find friends, find community, uh, talk about faith, uh, challenge faith, disagree with faith, all of those things. Um, and so thanks for just being a part of a night and a night when uh, there's just a couple of us leaders here and not everything was ready to go. So thanks for your patience on a couple of that. But I'm going to jump into this because uh, we're going to dive back into the, the series we started back in June was called Growing Pains. And at that um, juncture in time, what I talked about was, was this, and it's that we're not called to live a life of comfort, but rather a life that challenges our comfortability, which will inevitably, inevitably lead to growth. All right. We talked about how there's this tagline of a company I really like called seek discomfort. Doing things that are uncomfortable often puts us out of our comfort zone, which allows us to grow and expand and do things that we normally wouldn't do, right? And so when we look at the Bible, we never see Jesus call us to a safe life, but instead a life about others, about looking outside of ourselves, the life that we want to think about for ourselves, and then it's about giving it up for others. And I just love that tagline in a, a time where mental health is a really, really big thing that a lot of us are facing, the world is facing, hearing a message that says, hey, God says, there, God says I'm, I, I have a people that are there for everyone, like for the people who are mentally doing really great and those who aren't, right? Like that feels like a really great message to have at a time such as this of like, 
Who cares what that person believes, what their lifestyle is? God calls us to be there for them, right? And so that's what we talked about was how do you live a life of uncomfortability? Because um, we actually believe that's what Jesus calls us to. And so as we jump into kind of a second week in this, uh, I'm going to talk about pressure, all right? And the first thing that came to my mind when it was about pressure was like when I played basketball and the amount of times I had to shoot free throw game-winning shots because I usually was the one that rebounded it. 20 seconds left on the clock, I'd rebound it, they'd foul me, go down the court, shoot a free throw. That's pressure. Like, it's a game-winning decision. If I miss, the game's open for them to win and we lose. If I make it, I keep closing the door more and more and more, all right? Uh, other pressures that came to mind was, um, there's, there, I, I actually can't sound smart. Technically, a piece of coal with a lot of pressure way down, deep down the ground turns into a diamond. I mean, it's a ton of pressure, but it's a really cool concept. You guys probably, maybe you all knew that. I, I did not. Well, I, I can tell you, pressure makes a diamond out of coal. Um, other things is that uh, there's, I always, this is my term of it, the horrifying chant when people are like, Josie, Josie, and she's like, who knows what's happening? Like, they're telling her to eat a goldfish. But the like pressure when you're around a bunch of people and, and everyone's chanting for you to do this one thing. I, I hate that, but that's, that's a different type of pressure. Uh, maybe there's pressure that's put on you by family or other people or friends or school or work, whatever it is for you. Uh, the other one that came to my mind sounds like Ice Ice Baby, but it also is like by Queen. Have you guys heard this before? Um, but here's the thing, uh, I go on and on about pressure and different things, you know, I'm a smart science guy. But uh, when I enlisted some of those things, pressure sometimes sounded like a helpful tool. And then other times, uh, it didn't necessarily seem helpful. It almost felt more like an obstacle or a challenge. And some would even maybe go on to say, like, pressure can sometimes be a really damaging thing. And I wanted to pause real quick because I think um, when we look at, so I'll, I'll use an example. Like, there might be some, a moment that you look at in your life where there's a lot of pressure on you and you made the wrong choice. Or looking back on it, you're like, there's a lot of regrets that I have about that choice I made because of the pressure I was under. And... I just wanted to take a moment and pause here because I think this is really important is um, damage that we might get from pressure doesn't make us damaged, all right? We might walk away with scars uh, from the pressure that we put on ourselves or that others put on us, but that moment that we um, start looking at pressure as we now are damaged by that pressure is I think the actual moment we start to lose a part of the battle of life, all right? Because pressure can be damaging and painful but I often see God use us, use those most biggest hardships and challenges and things we face to be the area of life that we are most effective in. Maybe not in that moment, but further down the road. Um, another thing that I just want to recognize is that that could be a damaging moment, but that doesn't define you down the road. All right, And that's what I love about when we see people's stories is it could be 10 years, it could be 20 years, but when some people are like, I'll use a, this, this is a little bit of my own story, but I got picked on a lot, I didn't have a lot of friends, and that then turned me into, all right, how do, how do I figure out how to be the person who can talk to anyone, who can see anyone, regardless if we have anything that's common, because of the hurt that I went through. I was like, well, I wanna make sure that other people that could be hurting, or have never been hurt that way, get the opposite of what I got. And so maybe you're sitting there thinking it through, maybe you're finding your own pain or the own things that really hurt, and you might be sitting there being like, I don't understand why, this is super frustrating, and I think that's okay. Like there's a time where we are just sitting in a really frustrated point because of the pressure that we're facing, and I just wanna be like, that. that's all right. I think there will be a time and place at some point in time in our life where we can use the hardships we've gone through to make the best and positive impact on others. And so, um, go back to kind of thinking about pressure in your own life. What kind of pressure do you feel like you're under right now? Just in your head, name it, go through the list. And as you go through that list, notice what, what type of emotions are you feeling around those things? Are you feeling excited about them? Are you feeling angry, feeling sad? Does it make you scared? Like when you think of that pressure, just notice how you react as a person. Just kind of go through your list, think about it. Because I think one of the biggest steps that you can take with pressure is, is recognizing it. Just like growing pains, 
sometimes in order to go through transformation, we have to go through painful moments. Like I made a joke. I didn't get this tall with pain free. Like it hurt real bad, right? But it was really good. Pressure is similar. It can be a helpful tool if you have the right mindset. Here's another basketball stat. Turns out in the NBA, only 150 players out of 4,374 have ever made more than half the shots they took in a game. 150 had a 50% shot percentage or plus. Everyone else was below half the shots they made. And that means for those who took game-winning shots, they saw more game-winning shots missed than made. And that's a lot of pressure that they're under. And so I felt like, all right, here's kind of the breakdown of what they do with that information, all right? And similar, like with my team, we looked at film and we looked at what was going on. We took the pressure of like, hey, we're going for first place. And they went back to the drawing boards. They evaluated whether it was film or whatever. They did some shooting drills. Maybe they changed some of their shooting mechanics so they could be more accurate with how they're shooting a shot. Uh, they worked at it. They acknowledged that it wasn't going well, but they needed improvement, right? And I was like, well, why, why don't we just take that same concept and shift it up a little bit and try to apply it to life? So uh, here's a little bit of like some tangible things when looking at pressure in your life is uh, one, just notice it. Oftentimes we probably don't even realize pressure is happening and existing and playing out in different ways. So just being aware of what pressure is happening in our life I think is key. And then look at that pressure and is it positive or negatively impacting your life? Just name which one it is. And then evaluate, is it a healthy pressure? And a healthy pressure doesn't always mean I like it, right? Like I put pressure on myself to not eat ice cream every single night because that wouldn't be healthy for me. That's a good pressure to be like, all right, I'm putting some limits to not eat a gallon every day because I would. Um, but more serious notes, there's probably good pressure that you put on yourself of like, hey, I have some goals and I'm putting pressure on myself to reach those goals. It might not always be fun, but it's probably healthy. But evaluating it, is it or not? Um, and then I would say there's kind of a combination of things is uh, if it's not healthy, you might need to figure out a way to remove it or pro figure out kind of an exit strategy for that pressure if you're able to. But I think pressure is a place where you learn from it, try new things, and I think that'll eventually lead to growth, all right? And I, my guess is most of us are probably dealing with some sort of pressure, whether it's done by ourselves or done by other people, okay? So if you're like, do I, am I alone here? I would say probably not. Imagine the pressure that Jesus had if he was supposed to be this guy riding on a big horse that should have been living in a palace that had armies and a lot of power and influence, but rather he was this guy walking in sandals with a bunch of nobodies. And the amount of pressure that he had, not only socially of like, you don't fit what we thought was gonna happen, and then also the pressure of, and you're also supposed to save the entire world, everyone who's lived and will live. So I always just like to bring in this like, Jesus felt pressure in similar ways that we did. Like he wasn't just this person that doesn't and didn't know what we feel. So I always just want to bring that into perspective of the pressure ultimately turned into the sacrifice that gives us the best way that we can do life now. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump in. I think we can just do two, uh, let's do three groups of, you could do the math, roughly like five or six people in each group. Um, but I didn't really jump into any Bible verses or talk about scripture or say much about Jesus because I want the group time to be a time for you guys to do that. So it's essentially led by you all. These questions say who to pass the next question to. So I'm going to let you guys get into groups um, and chat and just what I only ask is like when someone's asking a question or talking, just listen to them. Be respectful of, of, as, of that person as they say something or share or try to lead the group in a question because sometimes you might not want to ask the question, but you were the one that got assigned to it. So um, if you guys want to get in three groups-ish of whatever, seven-ish people.